Hello App Inventors, this is a walkthrough of the Dodge game, a game of dodgeball. It's set to run in landscape orientation, so I'll rotate the emulator using Control F11. The object of the game is to drag the blue circle player to the blue square goal without touching any of the red dodgeballs. I've played the game before, so I'm going to reset the scores and level, then play a couple of levels. I've been given a confirmation that it's been reset. Now I can play. Okay, so you get the idea. There are 25 levels, and uh, let's look at the components in the designer. So you can see that the screen is set to landscape orientation, and responsive sizing is used. Is used. The Game canvas is set to 100% in width and height. Your player, called you, is a round ball sprite and the goal is a square blue image sprite. 25 red ball sprites are the dodgeballs. The game begins with one dodgeball and the number of balls increases for each level up to 25. Level 25 is the last level and can be played many times to improve your best score. You can reset the level back to 1 and best score to 0 at the startup screen as you have seen. Two notifiers are used. One is the welcome dialogue and one is for replaying a failed level. Sound effects for level up, best score, and failed are included. A confirmation delay button our clock timer is used to display a confirmation message when the user taps the reset button. Okay, let's switch to the blocks editor. Many of my projects will contain a procedure block, either named README or About, which contains the documentation for the project in a comment bubble. Initializing the game and prompting the user is done with the blocks you see on the screen here. The screen one initialized block is the first event block executed when the app loads. The global variables are also initialized at this time and the global dodgeballs list contains components for the 25 ball sprites. The goal image sprites width and height are set to a percentage of the game canvas width and height. This ensures that the relative size of the goal will be the same for different device screen sizes. U radius is likewise sized to a percent of the game canvas width. Game canvas font size is set to a percentage of the game, game canvas height and its paint color is set to a green color for the scoreboard text. 
the global best and level variables are set by the value saved in the TinyDB saved game state database. If there, there are no values, if those tags are not in that database, then default values are given. When the display welcome dialog is executed, which tells how to play or reset the game, then the user will either press play or reset. If play is pressed, then the scoreboard is displayed, the round player and goal sprites are positioned and the dodgeballs are set free to start the level. If reset is tapped, <clears throat> the best score and level values are reset, a confirmation message is displayed, and the confirmation timer is started. After a three second delay, the welcome dialog is redisplayed for the user to start the game when ready. Okay, let's look at the blocks for playing a level. Once the play button is tapped, the scoreboard is displayed. Since it draws text on the canvas, the canvas must be cleared each time the scoreboard is updated. The game canvas draw text block is used to display the level score and best score centered on the top of the screen. Stage hero and goal creates a list of corner coordinates for the player and goal sprites to be positioned at the start of the level. The goal's position is picked at random first. That location is removed from the list, then the player location is picked. Both sprites are placed at their start positions. Dispersed dodge balls enables the number of balls for the level and sends them out from the center of the game canvas, each in a random direction. The goal and player sprites are enabled last to prevent triggering the you collided with event block. The global dragging and goal variables are used to keep track of the game state. Dodgeball's radius percent is used to set the size of the dodgeballs. Now the dodgeballs are in motion and U Sprite can be dragged toward the goal sprite. Either the U Sprite will eventually collide with the goal or a dodgeball sprite. In the when you collided with event block, the global dragging variable is set to false to disable dragging after the collision. The U, Goal, and Dodgeball sprites are disabled and hidden after a collision. If the U sprite collided with the Goal, then the global Goal variable is set to true. This is needed since the Dodgeballs are still moving for a short time after the goal is reached and may trigger the collided with event block also. Ten points are added to the score. If the current level is less than the number of dodgeballs, then add one to the level. If the score is greater than the best score, then set the best score to the current score. Save the level and the best score in the TinyDB database and play the level up sound effect. Otherwise, just play the scored sound effect. 
display the scoreboard, set the U and goal sprites in position, and release the dodgeballs. Now, if the U sprite collided with the dodgeball, that means it would come here. And we're also ensuring here that it wasn't there wasn't a goal scored. So you don't want this triggered by mistake. We'll play the failed sound effect and we'll display the levels help dialog. The levels help dialog has two options. OK and quit. If OK is, is tapped, then the scoreboard is displayed, the sprites are staged and released. Otherwise, if quit is tapped, then close application is executed and the game is ended. The dodgeballs will bounce off the edges of the canvas, so there are 25 ball edge reached event blocks. The when you dragged event block allows the player to drag that sprite toward the goal. And that's all of the blocks for this game. Thanks for watching and Happy inventing.